Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And quickly, I want to introduce a place online that is most useful for looking at current and historical pricing. This is Cryptocurrency Live Prices. It's less than a year old, created by Reddit user Platinum Wealth. He is in South Africa. I really like what he's done because it's clean, it's free of ads, and there's a lot of information at glance. You can compare your project by pricing for the hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, one year, and of course, comparison to the all-time high. But the view recent tweets, I want to highlight this because we all live in a walled garden when it comes to Twitter. We have a tendency to only pay attention to those that we follow. If you jump out of your silo, you are able to get a grander view because this space is big and there's a lot happening. So it's very valuable and imperative for your knowledge. Right, the reason why I'm doing this video is because of an interview that was published in the Golf Business about 15 hours ago. It is MoneyGram's CEO, Alexander Holmes, and he talks about how blockchain is poised to revolutionize the GCC's remittance market. The GCC is the Golf corporation council they organize and foster political and economic unity for countries in the arabian gulf so specifically saudi arabia kuwait uae qatar bahrain oman this is a region that ripple has been very successful in they opened up an office in dubai at the end of 2018 and we know that the ripple experts dilip rao and sagar sabrai often have great annou announcements from this region. It's pivotal for remittance. Why? Because Saudi Arabia and UAE are the world's second biggest and third largest outbound markets, respectively. So MoneyGram has been active for nearly 20 years in Dubai. And do you know that MoneyGram has 22,000 corridors? Yeah, that is why when we look at just the one corridor that is on Bitso for the XRP use in the live corridor that MoneyGram went first live in. This USD Mexican peso corridor uh, is just peanut shells on the floor. And I know Galgatron keeps reminding me, but yeah, when you think about 22,000 corridors, yeah, he's right. The UAE, just as one country, for example, does 46 billion annually. 10 billion of that goes through banks, and 35 billion last year went through exchange houses. Okay, let's take a look at that article again. MoneyGram is half owned by private equity, and the other half is a public company, and they are in the middle of a turnaround, an XRP is a part of that story. So Tone Vase, if you can really wrap your head around what I'm about to say, you may be able to stop sounding so ridiculous. Point one, Mr. Holmes explains in this interview that XRP can settle across country borders in seconds. And these large pools of money across the world, which is inherently costly, is not needed. The XRP translates into fiat currency. It's disruptive, it's exciting, and the technology is changing the world. Now, I know Bitcoin has changed the world, and XRP is changing the world in its unique way. So point two, governments are beginning to mandate that data. So name, phone number, age, address, and customers that send money. It needs to stay where the transaction occurs. And with blockchain ledger technology, it can tokenize the money movements, making that data accessible. It's very important. Point three, Mr. Holmes is not taking down the for sale sign. Let me show you his quote uh, at the end of this article. We are a public company and private equity owned. If there are interested buyers, they should get moving because our value is going to go up in the next couple of years. Well, it has gone up significantly in the last month. I don't think it's going to take that long. So I tweeted out that 
last little bit in the article and I received some very interesting comments. Some people think that maybe SBI will buy them. Some people think maybe Ripple will buy them. Uh, others thought no, for sure it would be Visa. And then others chimed in and said, no, 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 it will be MasterCard. Well, there's one company that nobody mentioned and I just can't tell you enough that we shouldn't forget that Euronet, the parent company of RIA that is a Ripple partner, has more cross-border remittances in terms of volume than MoneyGram when it comes to foreign remittances, uh, is a company that almost bought MoneyGram in 2017. So who are they? Well, they are a leader in providing secure electronic financial transaction solutions. They operate one of the largest independent ATM networks in Europe. They are the world's largest payment network for prepaid mobile top up and the third largest global money transfer company in the world. So they were founded in 1994 and they're headquartered in Leewood, Kansas. They trade on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol EEF. You can see on Friday that they closed at $145 per share. Yeah, down just a little bit from their high in July of $171. But what is most interesting is that they have made 35 acquisitions in regards to payment services company. That is very impressive. So when they almost bought MoneyGram, the story is very interesting. They came in and offered one billion to buy the MoneyGram company, outbidding Alibaba. Can you imagine the two suitors that they had back in March 2017? But what happened is that um, Alibaba upped its offer and they upped it to $18 per share. Euronet was unable to compete with that higher offer and the, so they began focusing on political maneuvering instead and they got into the ear of the Committee of Foreign Investments in the United States called the CFIUS and they did so which really delayed the transaction from happening. What they said was that letting it go to a Chinese company was a national security issue. So here it is where they offered that $18 per share. And as the delays occurred, the MoneyGram stock dropped 25%. And so the deal uh, was terminated by Ant Financial on January 2nd, 2018. This has caused some hard feelings on the part of MoneyGram. Uh, they blame uh, Euronet for derailing the acquisition. The animosity between the two of them became very apparent with a public spat <laughs> this summer. Uh, 2019. But at the end of the day, you know, spats are spats and business is business. And should RIA and MoneyGram be a combined force using XRP? Wow, it can seriously nip at the heels of Western Union. If I were Western Union, <laughs> this is something I would be very fearful of. Okay, we are jumping to an illustration that I want to show you because it's quite fun. It's by a very important XRP community member here in Japan. And today is the very last day that people can apply to uh, participate in the XRP meetup that takes place in November. Because so many people want to go and the venue can only hold 300 people and it has turned into a lottery. So this illustration is Atare Atare. This is the uh, I need to hit the lottery um, mantra that you <laughs> might might repeat when you are trying to win. So I think this is how the XRP community in Japan feels right now. Everybody is really hoping they are one of the ones chosen to participate. All right, so this video I think has 
covered enough. Tomorrow, with the launch of Backed on Monday, I really want to take a look at the growing differences and the ever-widening world of Bitcoin and XRP. I Yeah, I'm going to save that for tomorrow, and we are going to move on to the fluff. So it's fall in Japan. Yeah, it's gotten nicely cooler. And here is a picture of Hokkaido up north. The fall color is coming in. The mountains are getting their snow-capped beauty. It's really my favorite, favorite time of year. And of course, today was the last day of the sumo <laughs> tournament. Yeah, for those of you who are being patient with my sumo fluff. Thank you very much because this is the last day I'm going to talk about sumo until the next tournament. So you've got a couple of months of relief. This is Enho. Of course, he is the flaming phoenix that is only 98 kilograms. And he met Tochi Ozon yesterday. Tochi Ozon is a really big high ranked wrestler. He did his debut in 2005. His highest rank has been Seki Wake, which is, wow, they are, uh, yeah, there's, there's usually just two of them, one that represents the East and one that represents the West. Rank, like so many worlds, whether you are a Michelin star restaurant or a world-class F Formula One driver, rank is everything, right? And in the world of sumo, it is uh, so important. Let me show you what an actual ranking sheet looks like. This is called the Banzuke. There are 600 ranked wrestlers in Japan, and it is just the, the top ranks that receive a salary. That salary is pretty good when you are in the rank of uh, Juyo. Yeah, starts at about $8,000 per month, you get also additional perks and prize money for your winning. But the Makauchi is where the serious money comes in. There are 42 Makauchi wrestlers on average, and they are receiving anywhere from $20,000 to $50,000 a month US dollars for their salary plus prize money. So it is serious to be a high ranked wrestler. Now, ranking in Japan is something that has been around a very long time. This country is ranking crazy. In 1852, we're looking here at a ranking sheet for eel restaurants in Japan. No, in Tokyo only, only Tokyo. Uh, there were 200 at the time in 1852 that met the ranking sheet. And if we look at that same time frame, there is a ranking sheet for hot springs. And it was easy to get your ranking up if you could find somebody to write who was qualified to talk about the health benefits of your onsen or your hot spring. And here we have the wealthiest people of Tokyo ranking in 1846. Those were store owners, money changers, and rice brokers for the most part on the top rank. So still today, when you shop in Tokyo, you are going to find these ranking signage on the shelves. Everywhere you go, whether I'm shopping for wine or browsing through a magazine, it seems like everything is ranked. So why is it? I'm always often wondering what it is with Japan and it's ranking everything. I don't know. Maybe it's because there's so many choices or maybe it's because everybody's busy. I'm not sure, but I have to admit sometimes it's very useful. So when you do come to Japan and you don't know what to buy, just look for the ranking signage and you might be happy that that has been ranked. Okay, let's jump back to Sumo. I want you to see what Enho did yesterday because this was a very important day. He's trying to capture his eighth win. That is Kachikoshi, and that guarantees that he won't go down in ranking. He can uh, keep his rank if he can achieve that eighth win within the 15-day tournament. So here he is against uh, 
Tochi Ozan. They're both trying to grab each other's belt. And he did it. Amazing. Really fun to watch. And you can see back here, these are banners that have been printed. Uh, he's just so popular. He, he Right now, he is the most popular wrestler in all of the ranking. And so <laughs> I'm sure when it comes to the next tournament, uh, there will be even more rooting for him. All right, everybody. You do take care and sayonara for now. Bye-bye.